Welcome to the 55th edition of Podcasters. Today with Wart de Moor. Wart, welcome. Hi. Hi, Tom. Great uh, to be uh, in your podcast. Uh, uh, great to have you. Please introduce yourself. Sure. Um, my name is uh, Wart de Moor. I'm a teacher at the uh, Avans University of Applied Sciences uh, in Breda, and I'm a teacher at the Communication um, um, uh, course and um, um, I've been doing this for about four years, more than four years now. And before that, I've been a, a communication consultant for uh, agencies, companies, um, uh, government uh, institutions, um, all kinds of um, organizations. And one of those organizations we used to work together. And, uh, that's true. Um, you were a very, very valued colleague of mine. And only Thank you so after. Much. My pleasure. And uh, an interesting thing is, uh, Wart, only after you um, you started teaching, I realized that um, the one thing you did as we were on the on the commercial side, mm -hmm. you were you were teaching us the whole time, and we I never realized that because you, you were taking us by the hand and mm. uh, showing us how to do better uh, on the communication uh, field or department. So uh, um, you are a very esteemed and valuable co uh, uh, former coworker. And I'm honored to have you here. And um, um, I'm happy to be with you. And with you, I remember uh, good times uh, working with you as well. Yeah, late night sessions. Exactly. <laughs> Getting stuff done. Well, we did. Sure. Um, but the, the, the reason uh, I asked you for the podcast is because um, I, I see this thing happening in, uh, in the communication world. It's one, uh, as I said in previous podcasts, uh, I see uh, writers uh, um, uh, closing their eyes or putting their head in the sand uh, like ostriches for what's happening in the generative AI mm -hmm. field. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is uh, I also see the, the conversational AI field, uh, um, writing or creating uh, chatbots. Mm -hmm. I see everything coming together because of the AI. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm curious to know what you teach these students Mm -hmm. What are you going to teach these students and, and how is that evolving into how the world is evolving? And um, um, because actually, if they evolve correctly, then we have the right people uh, in the market to do the work that needs to be done. If not, um, businesses are going to have to educate these people or these kids um, or retrain them. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that is always a problem, as you understand, because you uh -huh. want someone who is immediately sure. able to do the work. Exactly. Um, so tell me, how do you view uh, generative AI uh, as it is in in the in the market? Um, well, well, um, it, it's there and, and, and it's, it's there to stay. So um, um, uh, from Avan's point of view, we we see it as something we have to uh, work with and um, even uh, value it as a um, well, a very welcoming welcome uh, tool, but. Uh, of course, um, it is very important to use it um, in a, in a integrity, uh, uh, in an integer, <laughs> uh, how do you call it, in integer way, um, and uh, pr pr uh, with prudence, uh, I might say, and also in terms of um, uh, information uh, safety, um, make sure that you use it uh, wisely. Um, and that's very important in our uh, so, in our view. Uh, so, so is that based on not knowing enough, or being scared of how new tech uh, usually involves risks that mm -hmm. we don't under, pr properly understand, or we we can't really judge? We don't. It's sort of a black box. You mm -hmm. know, that, that, that. It's, I think it's both. Um, um, we see it as a, as, a, as a welcome uh, tool, as I said, um, because. Um, well, it opens incredible uh, possibilities. Um, only yesterday, I worked with a colleague on a, a new uh, cu curriculum, uh, f uh, according to the so-called chaos, uh, and not I'm meaning chaos in ch, but k a o s, um, uh, didactical uh, model. And um, well, we we prompted uh, ChatGPT, uh, well, give us a, a learning. Um, outcome um in uh, in this um, in this model and it appeared in no time which is incredible and saved us a lot of time yesterday so it's it's an incredible tool which really helps you and if you use it wisely 
well, you can accelerate uh, processes in an incredible way, in our view. And what do you think it's going to do for creativity? Is it going to improve or, or decrease the cre creativity mm. of your <laughs> students? Ah, the, the, these are, uh, I think, two views. It, I mean, it's, well, that, that, that's, that's um, uh, mammal, uh, mammal, uh, mammal like, uh, that you fear it or you, uh, you freeze or you, you, you flee, right? Right. So, um, um, a freeze, or, freeze or flight. Yeah, freeze or flight. But, um, <clears throat> well, I think we should, uh, we should, um, um, uh, use it and, um, face it and, um, make sure we, we can, uh, really, um, make a difference with it, which is absolutely possible. And, um, well, of course we have to, um, have, for instance, tests we do. We have students that are supposed to, to write and, uh, and they are supposed to learn how to write and a convincing, uh, convincing texts. Uh, well, we decided um, uh, the test of writing a uh, uh, an essay, for instance, um, where they're going to do it on location, on standalone computers, because simple as that. If they do it at home, well, anyone could do it, and a special chat GPT. So, well, well, you have to uh, adjust some things, but we want to make sure that our students are capable of writing themselves. Because only then they can judge the results that come out of ChatGPT, for instance. That's a that's a very important statement you're making mm -hmm. here. If if you can't do the work yourself, then mm -hmm. you can't judge the the outcome of the software. That's no. interesting. When I graduated, my old professor uh, said told me it's like if you don't know how to handle a broom, you cannot judge the person that is actually cleaning the room. It's exactly uh, that. Um, you can only, uh, you, you, you need some, um, uh, well, you can say luggage uh, in your uh, rucksack um, to uh, be able to judge what is right and what is wrong or what is uh, valuable or not. Um, otherwise, you cannot really judge what, what you're, uh, what's on your, in your hands, actually. But if you wish, take one step back, okay, mm -hmm. so, so you, you want them to learn how to write, I understand mm -hmm. that. Uh, but you also want them to learn uh, to understand how to use uh, conversation or uh, generative AI uh, mm -hmm. in a responsible and prudent. Mm, responsible, uh, that's the word. Yes, uh, I, I thought you uh, you meant that responsible <laughs> and prudent, uh, prudent way. Prudent, yeah. Uh, and I understand, and, and I agree that is important. So, um, and maybe this is suggestive, but shouldn't your one of your courses be continuous courses be uh, prompting? How do, mm -hmm. because if you don't know how to prompt, then you have no idea how to get the good, a, a good outcome. Um, I absolutely agree with that. And, um, um, as well, really, um, at this moment, we are, um, remodeling our uh, curriculum. Um, and uh, the first year will start next year in the new, uh, so tw 24, 25. Um, so yeah, exactly. And, and then, uh, and then, successively successively uh the other years we will uh, adjust as well but this is going to be one of the uh skills we want to uh, to learn them definitely um and it's going to be a new profession uh it is a profession probably already a prompting specialist prompting engineer yeah pro pro prompting engineer right yeah if but that's uh, is that the term well they use it uh um, okay. it's not really engineering but it, it's it's no. um okay. But one of the things, if you understand uh, uh, how the model works, mm -hmm. and that's the other thing, it's, I don't think it's not only about teaching them how to prompt, but it's also mm -hmm. how to, to understand how this model works. How does it predict the next word? If mm -hmm. you understand that, then you're, you'll be a better prompter. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 my vision is you also need some, well, not skills, but technical knowledge on how these models work and how they interact. Mm -hmm. um, in order to get to to put the right stuff in and get the right output, mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, so yeah. so it's more than just prompting. That's my uh, mm -hmm. true. But um, um, uh, we're we are at the beginning of a, a large process. And to be honest, um, I'm, I'm myself, uh, I'm not I'm not uh, an innovator on this uh, in this point, and I think that counts for a lot of my colleagues. Um, I'm happy that my institution, um, uh, Avance, um, says, well, it's there. 
and it's not going to change and we're not um, being frightened by it or something or say it's all fraudulent uh, if they use it. No, it's there. Um, just like um, we, we've accepted Google as a, a source of, of knowledge. Um, yeah. Well, that's what these AI uh, applications are too. So um, just next level. And, and how you... Because uh, uh, one of the things you could do is if you mm -hmm. use a, a, an LLM or generative AI, whatever you want to call it, um, to if you give it a text they have to study, and, they, mm -hmm. and you're you're giving an exam on some theory mm -hmm. or theoretical yeah. stuff, they could use the generative AI to generate questions, and probably some of the teachers will be doing that because uh, it saves them a lot of time. Mm -hmm. How do you view that? Because then uh, they they might not study the text. They just uh, ask the system to generate 100 questions and the answers, and they know the answers, and you know um, they won't study the content. How, how do you? Ooh. How do you, you? You never thought of this? Uh, not really, to be honest. Oh, um, you, you, uh, well, mentioning it, um, well, that, that's, that's going to happen. Um, I know it's going to happen, but 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 the question behind it yeah. is. Um, how do you, uh, and it's a nasty one, I, I, I realize that. How do, uh, but you know me, um, how do, how do, uh, professors or teachers or you want to, whatever you want to, uh, call yourselves, um, how do you control what your students are doing if you're also age wise, it's a normal thing. You're sort of lagging behind on the application of the new tech. I mean, they're mm -hmm. way ahead of you. Mm. Um, they've been using it in high school. True. So um, how, how, yeah. how do you, how, I understand the, 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 the university is saying, oh, no, it's here to stay. That's one thing. And mm -hmm. we're going to use it. That's the second thing. But mm -hmm. then actually doing it, changing people's minds and their experiences. How do you guys immerse yourself in this technology? How many of your, your, your communication teachers know anything about, uh, chatbots or conversational AI and mm. what's happening in that realm? To be honest, that's very limited. I'll tell you, and uh, and that counts for a lot of um, of the um, educational institutions, um, whether it's a, a higher education or lower education. Um, it's everywhere, I guess, because um, uh, education is a bit of a conservative uh, branch. Um, so, um, well, we have to um, to accelerate. Definitely, but that is the reason why we um, we will be using the chaos didactical uh, model because um, that um, works from the view that that you at the beginning of a uh, an educational activity you you ask what is there in the minds of the students. That's your starting point, and from there you develop with what they know and what they want to know. Then you add on um, information or knowledge or um, um, so we are uh, it, it's it's we're we're um, we're trying to leave uh, the, the 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 sending modus. Um, I, I'm teaching you. Um, we're going to leave that. So we're going to be more of uh, how to say how you say Guide. Uh, coaching. Guide. It's going to be coaching and. Um, stimulating and um, uh, challenge them to show what they know already and what they want to know and how they can add up to that. So it's going to be very different. No yeah, small it, classrooms. No, it's going to be um, uh, l large rooms, groups go coming in and out, experts flying in and out. Uh, depending on what they want to know and what they need to know at that moment. Uh, are you going to make the uh, education democratic then? Uh, in a way, uh, uh, you, you, to put it differently, um, we're going to use more of what is already there in the minds of the students, uh, what they bring with them and that they um, connect with each other more and, um, and exchange more of what they know and the luggage they bring with them. So um, it's going to be um, uh, more in a, in a way, a more democratic uh, way of uh, teaching and learning, learning communities, you might say.
Well, that, 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 that's a good, turn, a good thing in terms of the, the, I think, in terms of the process. Mm -hmm. But now here comes the million dollar question. Uh, <laughs> we in Holland, of course, have a historical reputation of uh, having a lot of university studies that um, um, educate people literally to not have a job. Uh, mm -hmm. or not being able to be an entrepreneur or whatever, yeah. but you know, it's, it's useless, almost useless knowledge, uh, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, how do you, if you make it democratic and they can choose whatever they want to learn, how do you, um, how are you compatible with what the, 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 the market needs? Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, and, or uh, with, uh, how you can make money as a freelancer oh, or see, as an see. agency? Yeah. Um, well, um, I think there, there's a difference between uh, traditional universities and universities of applied sciences. Because um, for, for, at Avance, for instance, we are always um, uh, in, in sync with with the uh, the working uh, with with the working market. So um, from day one, our students work with real. Um, uh, 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 partners who uh, who are uh, who have a question, so we know what they need, um, and we're exchanging every day, uh, basically. So uh, I think for uh, applied sciences uh, universities, it's it's not that that big of a step in that respect. I think for uh, traditional universities with more theoretical uh, studies, well, that might be uh, well, they they need to. Um, I think they need to adapt on that, but well, I'm not talking for the classical universities, but um, I, I would advise them to do so. Uh, yeah, I think you're correct. There's a there's a certain mismatch there. Mm -hmm. um, but 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 th 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 there's still this question in my mind: mm -hmm. um, if I can choose what I want to learn, mm -hmm. which is a, which is a good thing, but if I'm you know 19 or 20. Um, of course, I know a lot, but uh, uh, zero life experience. Um, what do you know about the world? Probably not no. enough to, to be able to understand what you actually need. So how do you um, make sure that it's not fun and games, but it's... Exactly. No, I know what you mean. It's, well, it, it's, it's coming back to what we said at the beginning of this conversation, that um, you, need, uh, you need to have some uh, luggage to be able to judge what is right, what is wrong, what is useful, what is not. So we still, uh, and I'm very convinced of that, that if you want to become a communication professional, you need to um, have some um, insights on some theoretical models, you need some insights on skills you have to learn. Um, so there still are going to be um, 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 fixed um, topics, stuff you have to do. That they, 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 they have to have uh, in there and, and, and then we, and we still want to test them on that just to make sure that, okay, they pass that point. Um, and that also um, confirms them that they are on the right way, so on the right track. So it's a mix uh, on one side, um, um, uh, offering them what they we think still what they need to become communication professionals, but still um, uh, offer the space as well to choose their own track and to make it their own track. So they can do a minor if they if they're more interested in designing or if they're more interested in um, behavioral change. Um, well, fine, sure, make uh, go there and uh, find your uh, find your track. So it's a mix, I think. And and uh, uh, um, I, I'm not sure if I heard you say this or it's mm -hmm. my my imagination, mm -hmm. but but. You said something that they need basic skills uh, in their in their mm -hmm. bag or in their backpack yeah, yeah. Uh, in order to be able to judge, etc. Um, mm -hmm. Is that then based on the view that we're moving towards a more skill based uh, society than just the, because knowledge is so readily available? Basically, uh, you said Google, but if you use uh, uh, generative AI, mm -hmm. I mean knowledge is at your fingertips, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you could ask, hey, why would I learn that if I can search it or ask it and, in mm -hmm, a chat true. And, and get a proper answer? Yeah. Uh, but the actual magic happens when I know how to use it. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? So is, uh, are you more geared towards, okay, we, we have to make sure they're, they're, what they do is skill-based and it's, mm -hmm. it's literally in there and they can, it's like muscle memory mm -hmm. or, um, you know, like in the old days, you know, a lot of theoretical knowledge, but you couldn't do shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's actually what happened when I graduated from, from university. My professor said, congratulations, you did a great job. I'm very proud of you. But you have to understand, you know a lot, but you can do shit. Yeah. Now but, the actual learning starts. You, you just know how to learn. Now, but, but that, 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 well, that, 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 um, that stresses my point that I think the classical university, a lot of those stu studies, um, there's uh, still no internship um, during the whole bachelor, for instance. That's crazy. Well, that's, that's amazing. I mean, how, how is that possible? So that is going to change, I'm sure. So coming back to your uh, point, I think uh, skill-based is, is the most important. But um, you need um, to, um, to be able to see connections. Um, and, th and therefore, I think you still need so a, a basic of theoretical um, um, construction uh, under uh, the things you're doing. Um, then again, uh, the fundamentals. you're only able to judge and to uh, if you if you have a, b a base of of skills and knowledge. So it, you need to have a certain foundation. Foundation, uh, or, exactly. Or, or which yeah. to build. That, that's what sure. you're what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I, I think that's that's probably true for a lot of professions. Mm -hmm. And that now now comes the interesting thing. How do you guys understand what kind of foundation that needs to be? Knowing that the, the tech around it um, and uh, is going is, is is moving at such an incredible pace. I mean, I I mean we're at a certain age where we've seen things move mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. and then yeah. a little bit better and a little bit yeah. better. Now we see these curves. It's, it's unbelievable the true. speed at which things are going. Yeah, true. But um, uh, a lot of things are still what they have always been as long as humans have been mammals. Um, for instance, behavior uh, influencing. Um, well, the basic uh, reasons why people make decisions or are moving or doing things, well, group, group pressure is there and it has always been there. Still works, very important. And you have to know if you're a communication professional, you have to know what mechanisms make people tick. Why do they do the things they, they do? And that's been for thousands of years. And it's going to be for thousands of years. Only, well, the, the, the technical context uh, will be very, very different. So, so, but so basic uh, uh, um, uh, rules on that are still the same. So are you guys teaching them uh, also applied psychology? Mm -hmm. in, uh, in Sociology. How do people act in groups? Uh, and critical thinking, philosophy, ethics um, are an important part of our uh, of our uh, curriculum. No, but but I mean, also, the, the, do you teach them how to use applied psychology in writing, a, for instance, a convincing text? Sure. Because uh, there's so many techniques you can use mm -hmm. uh, in order to get someone to do something. Of course, yep. in an ethical sure. way, uh, sure. I have to say sure. that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, th that is pretty unique because uh, most communicators. Um, and I, uh, you know, I've in the company we both worked in, we mm -hmm. had experiments where the communication people said you were gone at the time, um, said, no, no, this is not correct. And we had applied psychology in there and uh, we sort of did a contest and we had such improvements on the response mm -hmm. using applied psychology mm -hmm. uh, that in, in a chatbot, this was, uh, or invitation for a chatbot. Sorry, yeah. I have to say it correctly that mm -hmm. people were, were, in shock and they, they never tried after that because they had no idea how to do it. Yeah. And, uh, and I think there's a, the, 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 we need a whole new generation of comunicados mm -hmm. that, that understand how to apply that and how that works in AI and how that works in chatbots and, and the whole spectrum. True. And um, uh, what I see now is that most communication people just have one part of the spectrum and, and that's True. just, we write a text and sometimes they know it's either long copy or short copy, and mm -hmm. they they either write for online or for offline. It's mm -hmm. 
I, I know that, that you see very few all rounders. True. If I have to be honest. Um, well, and um, well, the point I wanted to make is that that there, there um, uh, although um, the context is changing rapidly, some basic uh, mechanisms are still there, and uh, I think our students need to know what works and what doesn't. Um, and of course, in a very different context, but still, um, there are um, well more things that are what they have always been, uh, and um, we have to still have to teach them th those, I think. So when are we going to start teaching your students about chatbots and conversational AI? Hmm. Well, <coughs> well, as I told you, we are working on changing the curriculum. And, um, um, well, uh, your invitation for this uh, podcast um, does uh, remind me that we do have a, uh, a, a nice uh, assignment uh, to to work on this uh, field because it is changing so rapidly, and uh, they, well, I think they are used to it so quickly, um, and they probably they will bring it in when they come from uh, from high school. So we yeah. have um, a, a, a great task there. Yeah, and they have been using uh, uh, mm -hmm. probably uh, chatbots and, and I guess uh, so uh, all the time. So that the. Yeah. Uh, and that, that is the interesting part. There's a lot of shitty chatbots out there. We have to be honest as well. <laughs> um, but there's also quite, uh, and it's getting more and more uh, good ones that mm -hmm. actually do the job. And um, um, you go somewhere and it's functional. And here's the interesting thing. Um, that's why it's going to be so interesting to, to, to teach these students. Um, because there's a difference between uh, a beautiful conversation mm -hmm. In, in nicely written and, 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 you know, with beautiful words and, and, and I don't know, like prosa, mm -hmm. uh, poetry almost. Um, people should, could understand Prozac, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Although a bad chatbot is very depressing. Mm -hmm. Um, th th on the one hand, but a functional chatbot, it's a whole different story. Uh, if you go to a website and you want to get something done, <laughs> um, the idea is you, it should take me from A to, to C or G or M, whatever, mm -hmm. as fast as possible in the shortest track possible to take as little of my time as possible. I'm not interested in chit chat. I, I come here with a purpose. You ask me what my purpose is and get shit done. Mm -hmm. Um, that does not require a beautiful conversation. It no, requires true. a functional conversation. Yeah. So in order to design a good conversation, and that's the interesting part. You need to have a certain understanding of business, mm -hmm. what it needs, and you need to be able to put yourself in the place of the business on one hand and the customer of that business on the other hand. And th that is really difficult because that's why you see so many uh, bad chatbots because a lot of times they're inside out. Exactly. Uh, we want to sell you stuff. We want to send you a lot of information. And really, yeah. I don't care. Just get me get me where I want. And if you can't give me a life agent, that's fine too. Yeah. But I, I want to get stuff done. Yeah. Um, well, there's but, a world to win there. Yeah. But how, how do we get, uh, um, how do we get these students mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and, and use this discussion maybe to inspire you, but how do we get these students uh, in a place where if a company hires a communication person, they understand mm -hmm. that a, uh, how to build a good chatbot, not necessarily have to do it themselves, but to, in order to, um, so that the, now the, the chatbots usually are not from the communication department. And I think that's a bad, bad thing. It mm -hmm. should be part of the communication mix. Yeah. Um, but, but they don't know, that. how, but they don't know how to do it. So there's another department that does it. So you get, uh, and then you get all these stupid discussions. Yeah. But at the tone of voice and the, mm -hmm. the blah, blah, blah. And that's because they don't understand it needs to be functional. But then yeah. we, no, no, but th then they take over. You get this beautiful conversation, but people are not happy because it takes too long, a large amount of text, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so, so how do we get that together and eventually have students that either know how to guide the process, uh, uh, understand the process and understand the, the, uh, which questions to ask in the organization to get to mm -hmm. uh, a good result. Because uh, that's currently, that's what's lacking. People don't know which questions to ask. So no. it's the same as prompting. If you don't know which questions to ask on the, the AI, you don't get the right outcome. 
garbage in, yeah. garbage out. Yeah. Well, um, of course, our, uh, our students learn about uh, customer journeys, um, uh, client journeys, or however you want to call them. Um, and um, well, that, that's the start. If you're able to, uh, to imagine what, uh, what journey um, customers follow, um, only then you can develop the right questions, uh, I guess. So that's what we are teaching. And I can imagine that um, th this is a, a, a quite a specific uh, kind of sport, um, a chatbot uh, development. Absolutely. Uh, I, I would imagine that uh, if students um, in our um, uh, in our study um, are um, inclined to, to uh, do more with this, they, they could do a minor uh, in, in this. And then they add that to their own personal track. Um, and and the, the the part of uh, learning uh, how um, customer journeys work, well, that that's going to be part of our basic uh, skills and knowledge. Um, and um, well, if they want to develop on chatbot development, for instance, well, they they can add that to their personal track. I would say. So you're going to take that. Uh, that's going to be something in your curriculum. Um, uh, at least. Um, we will offer them uh, um, the, the, uh, the minor um, that, that will help them with that, for instance. Just like we also have uh, design possibilities or uh, um, some add-ons on the basic track. So, and, and only the students that start in the first year, the 24-25, will be mm -hmm. able to do that? Or all the students that are currently studying? No, currently studying uh, students also, they also have a minor possibilities. Um, so um, it's possible. But I think we have to, uh, as I said, we, we come from far. So um, <laughs> there are some um, some lacks to, uh, to be filled. So uh, I have a... Um... How shall I put this nicely? It's not, it has not nothing to do with Avance specifically, mm -hmm. but in general, if I look at the education, the, 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 the developments are going so fast mm -hmm. that, um, and you make a curriculum, it takes four years to get a student out, um, mm -hmm. uh, and then they have, cap have skills. But, uh, how do we, make sure they stay up to date with whatever's happening outside in the world so that the skills that they have, they're actually relevant mm -hmm. to and compatible with what's happening in the outside world, which you see in a lot of studies. They use out in high school, they, they use outdated books. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever the kids are learning, it's, it's outdated. Well, well you know speaking, I mean. speaking for, uh, for our communication study, uh, as I said, we work with, uh, with real um, assignments from day one. Um, so simply, uh, they are required to be uh, on uh, on track. So um, that that helps us to to be uh, to be um, 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 to be um, actual uh, to be um, relevant. Relevant. Yeah. So so then the way I see it, you mm -hmm. need uh, you need a real good connection or a lifeline with uh, the conversational AI community in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. in order to to give the students the opportunity to, to do real life shit mm -hmm. uh, with companies or agencies to yeah. to actually build, develop, learn about conversational AI slash chatbots yeah. uh, application in companies. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that something you're you're considering or or yeah, well um uh, to be honest i haven't been considering it before we we we, <laughs> we talk to each other so my pleasure <laughs> you're welcome um but um uh, well i think it's it's a very uh, interesting and relevant uh, theme uh, to be working on so why not uh, that, that 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 gives me hope for the future because um um uh, understanding that a lot of the customer service that we're seeing is going to happen uh, with conversational AI. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at all the research that's being done, you see that uh, um, customer service agents and call centers, I'm not going to say they will be replaced, but a lot of the, the, the workforce will be doing different stuff because mm -hmm. a lot of the questions, repetitive questions and tasks can mm -hmm. be performed by generative AI. Um, so, so, that makes their work uh, very interesting and uh, relevant, but uh, um, um, they, they, 
how should I say this? They are part of a changing society and they can have an influence on it. Yep. And uh, that's why the ethical part, what you guys are doing is, is really good. But uh, um, th they can have a huge, huge impact, uh, more than they probably realize right now in that market. And, and we're talking about the market of billions and billions uh, yeah. that is going to change. If you imagine that um, you can now, all these customer service agents, they look in two, three systems, through documents, what, you know, what if the, uh, the customer just has access to all these documents and you just can ask the question and the, um, with the LLMs, you just retrieve the right answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well that, that, that's also very, very, um, uh, useful because a lot of these chatbots are truly annoying, uh, at being uh -huh. a customer. My God. Part of the problem there, because um, uh, we've been working on that, part of the problem there is uh, garbage in, garbage out. What mm -hmm. we found is that exactly. if, uh, and that's also uh, for the communication people, uh, that, that that leads me to another question. One of the things you see is you can upload a document or um, um, use a document and uh, use um, RAG, retrieval mm -hmm. augmentation, uh, um, and, um, uh, and ask a question, to a document and get an answer. Mm -hmm. However, if that document is poorly written or has contradictions in it, then you run into trouble. So the, uh, the, the task for communication people or people that are actually writing um, stuff, and that goes from HR to any other company document, mm -hmm. uh, or if it's policies or whatever, um, if it's poorly written, if you don't understand how AI uses your document, Again, uh, you're going to create shitty chatbots because it's, it won't be able to get out, get the right information out, uh, or won't do it consistently. That's another problem. So mm -hmm. customer A gets answer A and the customer B asks the question a little bit differently and gets a total different answer. Um, so that's another thing I think your students should be trained on to understand, okay, how does this AI work and, mm -hmm. or, and LMs work and how do they retrieve information and how do they index it? And how then should I write my text so mm -hmm. that the company uh, or the, the chatbot gets good answers, information, what have you? So is, is that something, uh, um, well, that has you, had your attention or will have your attention? Um, well, well uh, convincing content and um, um, making sure um, uh, it can be understood only in one way, um, that is... Um, well, what we do learn our uh, students, um, and that um, uh, the mindset to do so, um, they they we will we will um, learn them that. But um, then again, uh, I think this specific uh, field of uh, chatbots, I think it's it's going to be a a minor track or um, um, an add-on. Um, to be honest. I just realized something. You know, you can use the, the exact same AI to help your students. So what if you use, uh, if it's a GPT or another mm -hmm. one, doesn't matter. You, you take the text from your document, mm -hmm. you upload it, and you ask the, the AI, okay, well, give me five different interpretations you could mm -hmm. give to this document, to the content. Or uh, um, actually, you, could, you can have them test their own documents Mm -hmm. um, and or ask uh, the AI to analyze uh, which convincing techniques were used uh, yeah. and what they could do differently to make it more convincing and have the AI suggest a better text. Yeah. Um, so AI becomes the teacher. Mm -hmm. Great. That's actually, uh, uh, <laughs> I just think it's of a, sorry. Interesting times. That's yeah, for sure. Well, well, uh, but how does that feel for you as a as a professor, as a teacher? Oh well, um, our our role is going to change, um, and um, we're going to uh, to help our students um, on their track, and, and and that role is going to change. And well, uh, I'm uh, curious about that. How it's going to work? Um, we'll see. Ah, um, you don't have the answer yet. Not yet. No. To be honest, no. No, no, it's a, it's a good thing you're honest. Now you told me you're also uh, uh, you also work as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. That means you you do writing projects. Mm -hmm. Do you use uh, generative AI 
yourself right now to write your text? Or to... um, well, um, um, uh, every now and then, but to a limited extent, because um, most of my uh, my activities are uh, uh, personal training or um, presentation training, uh, which is really in contact with uh, with clients. So. Um, um, it's, ah. it's not that much about writing now. Okay, so that, that, that makes sense. But the, the, the other thing is you can also use uh, a generative AI to create presentations. Sure, sure, yeah. And uh, and put convincing techniques there and, and have it but write the text wise, they should use. Marketing-wise, I'm a laggard in this. So um, I, I, <laughs> I trust my own skills. Uh, and um, and uh, being trained uh, over the years of, of writing uh, quickly and... Uh, uh, pretty convincingly uh, saying it myself. Um, I, I, I haven't used it that much, to be honest. So I feel really um, um, well, guilty is not the word, but um, there's some uh, work to be done from, for myself, I guess. Well, uh, I, I would <laughs> highly, um, I would advise you to, uh, to to really try it because uh, mm -hmm. you'll be amazed at. Um, so some of the stuff you more than anybody else I know are capable of judging the quality. Mm -hmm. That's really important and, and improving on what you get. And what I see is that maybe it's not perfect. It's not. Uh, and uh, we don't have to give the idea that it is. Um, no. But uh, in terms of productivity, if you know some of the questions you need to answer, it saves you the time to it's start with an empty piece of paper. Exactly. And you speed up the process. And I think it also uh, speeds up, if you do it right, it speeds up the creativity process mm -hmm. or the creative process, I should say, yeah. to to look at a problem from different angles. And then, you know, you have these angles to choose from. It's like, oh, this feels good. Okay. And then uh, try and explain why. And you can even use the AI to do that. So that I, um, and I see that in, um, uh, for instance, if, if you design a chatbot, you can have a generative AI actually create that, uh, simulate a conversation. Mm -hmm. And where you say, okay, but make it more empathetic or do this or that. And you, you see the nuances in, mm -hmm. and, and no, it's not perfect, but the, the, the it, you learn so much from it that the next time you see it, you, you, you go faster and faster. So it, it's, it's, it doesn't stop with just using the tool. Every time you use it, you're better at it. Right. And you get better results quicker. So if you're mm -hmm. a freelancer, at one of the discussions in another podcast with someone, then, um, um, in my opinion, the, eventually the hourly model is not a, a sustainable business model. Uh, because no. you're, you're limited to the amount of hours you can, uh, uh, you have. Um, but what if you could, within that lousy business model, you could mm -hmm. make that those hours count for more. Mm hmm and that's what, what generative AI does. There's only one risk that if your customer understands that you use generative AI, they say, ah, oh, you're more productive. So I want more output, output for the same hour. Exactly. So I don't accept that many hours. So that, that, that's the, the, mm -hmm. that is going to change as well. Yeah. Definitely. Well, that's, I mean, it's the same, uh, where we used to, uh, have to spend, uh, two days in the library. We have one Google search now. I use um, microfiches. Well, yeah, microfiches, right? <laughs> exactly. So, um, well, it, it, it's it's comparable, uh, and even uh, well, it's uh, it's uh, going even faster. But um, the changes are were there, and they're they are going to be there. So, and how do you tell your students, and how do you keep up with all the 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 huge amount of knowledge that, mm -hmm. you know, articles, are, some are yeah. relevant, some are less relevant, yeah. that, that come out every day. I don't know about your LinkedIn, but uh, uh, the amount of information that's poured over us, it's, it's I don't know, it's it's unbelievable and it's mm -hmm. undo, undoable as well. How do you yeah. manage that? How do you select? Because you're, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I remember is that you, you are really good at, at, at picking what's relevant and what's mm -hmm. not. And um, um, yeah. I think that's a gift or Thank a great, you. great talent. Uh, how do you do that for yourself? And how do you do that for your students? How do you, of all the new knowledge and information mm. that comes out, how do you select? Um, uh, well, for myself, um, I, I limit 
the amount of uh, of uh, sources uh, I use, I, I still uh, read uh, newspapers because I'm, I'm I'm commuting by train, so then I really have the time to uh, read uh, read uh, papers. Being a boomer, uh, I'm one of the last standing, I guess, but still, um, well. Um, uh, as I said, a lot of the, the basic uh, mechanisms um, don't change that much. Um, and um, that helps me um, seeing, okay, what is really important? And, and then it helps me selecting what uh, there, there's a lot of um, uh, old wine in new uh, bags uh, uh, in everything that's being produced. And um, um, a lot of things have been there already. Yeah, that's because I was going to say, because part of the problem with generative mm -hmm. AI, mm -hmm. we're regurgitating a lot of the yeah. content and and, exactly. and it's produced as, oh, it's new. And mm -hmm. uh, but if you look new. through, it's like, no, well, new. Um, mm -hmm. How new is this? But yeah. the, it's by different people or they've put stuff together and okay. created something apparently. So it's, you have this, this gift to naturally filter stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how do you... Teach your students that. How, how, because how, you say I, have, I use a few sources. How do you know which source to use? Because that's wow. another thing with fake yeah. news. And, and so how do you judge? <clears throat> it's probably based on your experience. But how do you mm -hmm. judge if, if that source is a continuous source of reliable information? With a, with, I'm stressing continuous mm -hmm. because you say mm -hmm. I use the same sources. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I say uh, I have a, a couple of uh, sources I, I regularly uh, use. Um, yeah, well, that, that, of course, that, that's that's also a choice. Uh, it's my choice. Uh, it's not. Um, well, you cannot state that they they are um, um, uh, relevant or uh, trustworthy sources, but I think they are. Um, and maybe um, I'm a bit of uh, th that's because of my background. I've, I've been I, well. I've grown up with relatively limited amount of uh, media, so um, well uh, I stick to some of them, like uh, NOS or um, Volkskrant or Financiële Dagblad. Uh, or um, well, I know that they have checks and balances, uh, and they write about mistakes they uh, they make. So um, they are open about their eventual uh, fa failures. So um, as long as they do that, that that helps me. Um, well, saying I trust these these guys. What if I tell you that, uh, for instance, NOS, uh, mm -hmm. they have a huge bias in the information they present. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sure, of course, yes. no, they, they, they actually do, um, and not even from political stand view, but what mm -hmm. they present and how they present stuff. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, there's a lot of political correctness in there, mm -hmm. trying to please everybody, um, and you can't. And, and uh, I'm not no. saying they should take a stand, but they they um, but they don't, and they mm -hmm. they. Um, well, anyway, what I'm trying to say is uh, before we get into it, whether NOS is is good or bad, that's, that's mm -hmm. not the point. Um, if you have a few sources, and we know some of the sources, also newspapers, they have a certain bias. Sure. Um, th that you're not stuck in this bubble, not you, but in general. Well, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, well, I, I think we don't. Uh, it's, it's impossible to um, to um, um, well to to not have a, a, a bias. Uh, everybody has a bias. Um, no, well, that, that, that I understand. That, you, that we both have a bias. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And people should. I want you to have your own opinion. That what mm -hmm. makes what makes you you. Mm -hmm. But but the information I get yeah. should be unbiased so that I can be me um, and um, yeah. interpret it the way I want. Yeah. But if it's already interpreted, then you're you're being influenced. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm what I'm trying to say. How do you yes. make sure? And now I don't think you're the problem. But a lot of the people do have a problem because they get influenced real easily. You're very uh, thorough and 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 uh, open-minded, so you you think about what you see is like uh, makes sense or makes no sense. Right. But but what about all these people that are not like that? And most people yeah. are not like that. No, true. So I, I, 
That, no, I mean, I'm not saying that there's a simple answer. Uh, there is no simple answer. Um, uh, the, the only, uh, in a way, uh, students have their priorities. Um, they uh, stay in bed. They have uh, a lot of other things to do. Um, Drink, smoke. Well, they, they don't mind uh, being uh, uh, on top of the news sometimes. So, um, well, they, uh, in that way, they have their they have, they have their own filter. But... Um, uh, looking at the um, uh, what's happening with the rabbit holes on uh, online uh, on on the socials, if you uh, if uh, 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 Facebook or uh, one of the others is um, is, uh, is, your, is your own source and the algorithms behind it exactly, and that they they that they really put you into a um, uh, a, uh, a vacuum, a trap, yeah, a a rabbit, rabbit hole. So. Um, well, I'm I'm not using uh, Twitter, for instance, uh, or X. Um, uh, it makes me it makes me tired. It's about five percent or ten percent of of the uh, the total amount. But but journalists, well, they they Damn. every column is based on X, which is stupid. I mean, it's it's definitely not the opinion of of the world or uh, the the society. So that is really biased. Um, I think that's very bad. But that's that, that's what worries me in students because they consume all these shorts on mm -hmm. socials. Hey, I'm yeah. guilty. We make them too. Yeah. But, um, um, but, but but we're not on a political spectrum. But we're just trying to share mm -hmm. knowledge. Yeah. So that, that's a different uh, a way of doing it. But if I mm -hmm. look at the political side of things or yeah. um, um, uh, uh, other influencers, they they it is scary what's happening out there. I I hear students or kids have opinions like. Yeah, uh, that's impossible. You could actually say you have no idea what's behind it. Your 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 um, how do you say that? Not parrot, but um, um, you're just mimicking or copying whatever is being said out there. Mm -hmm. That that yeah. cannot be your own opinion. You should be critical and and seeking for answers. And even if you Google it, you mm -hmm. see what's behind it. Then you understand there's more to it than just what you're um, uh, shouting. Or well, look at the school elections. I mean, uh, FVD and uh, PVV were on TikTok, and they are the greatest, greatest um, parties uh, of all in yeah, school I, elections. Uh, that, doesn't can, they, well, I mean, huh? that doesn't surprise me because no. they they in certain TikToks, they they they, yeah. they they look at certain stuff. There has an algorithm, and it pushes more and more of the content. Mm. And we know the more exactly. you see something, and if you actually watch it. Then it does something to your brain, yeah. And um, and and, that, and that's sort of it stops them from being critical thinkers. And that's you know, well, no, um, that, that's exactly the reason why critical thinking is such an important part in our uh, study. Besides um, uh, behavioral uh, influencing, uh, psychology and uh, applied psychology and applied sociology, critical thinking and ethics are very, very important in our study because being a communication professional, you have to be able to uh, judge what is what is uh, worthy, what is relevant, what isn't, um, what is fake news and wh or what isn't. So um, we are, well, we, we are training them to be critical. Um, if you could give an advice to established communication professionals, which mm -hmm. you know, have been out of school for yep. a while and working mm -hmm. for companies or as freelancers, uh, in order to, now they're behind of the game, most of them. Mm -hmm. I hope I don't insult anybody, but in order no. to get on the game or ahead of the game, yeah. what, would, what would you advise them to do? And don't tell them they should come and study with you. No, 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 sure not. Um, no, um, uh, be curious. Uh, want, wanting, want to, to know what's going on. Um, um, orient yourself on the, and, and, and uh, experiment with it. So um, experience what it does and uh, how it can help you ex accelerate processes um, for your own use to start with and then um, um, embed it in your uh, curriculum. Uh, or, or if you're not in education, uh, use it for your clients uh, or for the company you're working for. And should they be honest about uh, to their clients? Or should they tell their clients they're using it? Or um, don't, don't tell them and just, you know... 
in voice. I think we're, we're, we're in a gray phase at this moment. Um, uh, some of them are using it, some uh, are not. Um, well, if you're clever, uh, you might be using it now and not saying it, um, but it's going to be uh, in a couple of years. Um, everybody knows you're using it. So, um, well, you, you cannot fake it too long. Maybe you can fake it for uh, another year, let's say. Yeah, but at some point they understand they can do the same shit for less. Sure. Yeah. So they. Uh, so no, I mean, stock, stock photography will die. Yeah. I mean, you can prompt any uh, situation, and um, it's, uh, well, it's. Uh, but but the, the, the here here becomes interesting because um, <laughs> uh, no, 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 it, 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 you have a fair point. Um, um, here becomes interesting because um, you, you run into this problem or this challenge of uh, copyright intellectual mm -hmm. property thing. Yep. And that has not been resolved yet. No, and, true. Uh, and that's a scary, uh, well, not scary, but it's a risky slope. Because yeah, it is. if you base your business on certain photos, which you mm -hmm. normally would have bought uh, on a, with stock photos or have a photographer make them for you and pay, pay good money for mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. to get quality photography. Now you use uh, Dolly, for instance. Mm -hmm. You are not sure that the images you are getting are free of any rights exactly. or intellectual property or what have you, and no. that you might be sued for using a part of a photo of someone yeah. else. Yeah. And I think if you're a serious company, uh, of course, you can. What you can do is use AI to change or improve the photo. But actually, Photoshop has been doing that for years, and nobody calls it AI, but it's AI. Yeah. yeah. Um, true. And here's the, I think if you're a serious company, but serious about your brand, you should have, um, you should make something original that is unique to your brand mm. um, and your the image of your brand and. You can expand on that and, and use AI to create more, but you have to have some basic things uh, that are uh, you. Yeah, um, I, I agree on that. Um, uh, and and, and, and that, that will still stand out, I think, in, in the future as well. Uh, real original um, creativity w w will stand out. It, it, it's like a photography, like uh, everything is going digital, Mm -hmm. However, you see now this trend to go back to analog photography because mm -hmm. th there is a there's this romantic yeah the colors are richer and that kind of uh, yeah, yeah you can maybe do you you need more photos to get a good picture but but mm -hmm. you can manipulate less and yep. you have to go to the dark room to do stuff uh, for those who don't know what a dark room is you develop photos you don't mm -hmm. meet other people. Um, just to be sure, mm -hmm. uh, cause kids that are born a couple, uh, 10, 15 years ago have no idea. And uh, no, not, the, not that I had some association. Yeah, the wrong one, but mm -hmm. not that I imagine them watching this po podcast, but, um, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it is a thing. And I see, th I, uh, that sort of connects to you and, and that's a beautiful way of, of ending the podcast, but uh, it sort of connects to what you said. It's like there's always these old values that will still stay and they drive yeah. maybe innovation and technology, but they're still the same old values. And I think that's uh, uh, actually a big truth. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I strongly believe in that. Um, uh, uh, people are still people. We're still um, um, uh, being influenced by the, our peers and um, by uh, the people around us. Um, um, uh, psychological mechanisms are still the same as they were uh, in the uh, with the Greeks and Romans. So, um, yeah. well, what um, maybe that's um, rel relative uh, relativating things a bit. Yeah, well, that's that's important. To, we, we always need to do that and, and not take ourselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. However, uh, on that mm -hmm. note. Um, I think, uh, uh, and I wish you luck with changing the curriculum of your education. If from, we from broadcasters or uh, from my network mm -hmm. can help you change the curriculum and inject some conversational AI into Absolutely. your curriculum, we would love to do that and help you with that because uh, the market needs them. Um, Definitely. And especially these, these, these omni communicators that are communicators that understand mm -hmm. the whole spectrum. 
um, and and thus manage the, the voice of the company uh, properly. And I think that's mm -hmm. important. Yep. So the, the customer gets the same experience everywhere. So thank you for your, your time and participation. Really appreciate it. And, thank you. Um, I've learned a lot. Oh, that, 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 that's also good. I hope that the viewers and listeners learned a lot too. Um, and looking forward to maybe next time after you've, you've introduced a new curriculum, uh, wow, maybe, yeah. maybe with a student to, to tell yeah, us about true. the experience. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Let's do that. Thanks for thank inviting you. me. Thank you very much, Vart. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.